Where are you headed in life? And for each of us, we may have a different answer to that. And some people might answer, I haven't got a clue. And for all of us, we need to understand that we are going somewhere. You're going somewhere in your finances. You're going somewhere in your education. You're going somewhere in your physical health. You are going somewhere in your family. You're going somewhere in your marriage. You're going somewhere in your parenting. In every area of our life, we are either going somewhere good or we're going somewhere bad. We are going somewhere. We're either going healthy or we're becoming unhealthy. We are going somewhere spiritually. It is a journey and life is full of a journey and we have many paths going on in our life and just because we might have one path right doesn't mean to say we have the other paths in place but we need to understand that every decision that we make sets us on a trajectory towards something or somewhere and it's important that we actually know where that is where do we want to be And it's amazing how many times we want to be somewhere, we intend to go somewhere, but actually our intentions are not good enough because the things that we do send us in an opposite direction, yes? So for example, if I'm on, I can be on the A1, but I could be traveling north or I could be traveling south. And depending on whether I am traveling north or south will determine where I end up. My intention might be to go to London, but if I'm going north on the A1, I'm not going to end up in London. And so it is in life. We can have good intentions financially, and yet we are on a different path. And so we end up in debt rather than having some savings. In other words, every aspect of our life, there is a path. We can think of that healthily wise in our In our diet, in our exercise, the things that we eat, it's a path, yes? It's not the one-off ice cream that makes a difference. It's that constant eating biscuits or having ice cream every day or most days or... Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's that 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 we do on a regular pattern, a one-off. It's rare in life that a one-off decision affects our life completely, but actually it's the ongoing daily decisions that we make. And so in this series, I want us to look at the path that we're on, and we're going to, through this time, we're going to look at some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves on the journey that will help us to make some good decisions. Because our decisions determine the direction of our life, and the direction of our life determines the destination that we will end up in on every area of our life. Now, I don't know if you are like my wife, but she is what is termed as directionally challenged. (laughs) In other words, she easily gets lost. So, for example, now we have GPS satellite, do we not? What amazing thing we have, and Kath will tell you that it's changed her life having a sat-nav. Now, I remember the first time we had a sat-nav, and we were in, uh, we were in uh, Stockton, and we hadn't been here too long, we'd only been maybe a year or two, but Kath, well, I set up the GPS for her for the destination she wanted to be. However, what I didn't realize was that when we turned the engine off, we turned it off and then turned it back on, the sat-nav would go and default to another place of interest. So although I had set it up to go to point A, the sat-nav was actually going elsewhere. And then I got a phone call from Kath to say, I'm at the airport. (laughs) And I said to her, she says, yes, but you're meant to be going to Middlesbrough. She says, yes, but I don't know which way to go. Where am I? So in other words, so for me, I'm thinking, 
It's common sense, you know, the way to Middlesbrough. But for Kath, of course, it was handy to have this GPS, but she followed it to the law. Now, sometimes in life, we can end up following people or following things, and it leads us down a wrong road. It's not where we intended to go. It's not where we planned to go. It's not where we thought we would go, but we end up being there through sometimes what we think is no fault of our own, but we have followed aimlessly. We followed thoughtlessly. Now, I remember another time when Kath got lost. It's a sermon on Kath, I can tell you now. I'll get into trouble later, but there you go. Um, <clears throat> she'll be dying to have a time to preach just to get her own back, you do realise, don't you? So there's method in my madness, but there you go. Um, I remember um, Kath, and uh, I, of course I didn't get to know until after. You never get to know until after your dear husbands. But, uh, but Kath had got lost. We were living in Glasgow at the time. And, um, and Kath, was, she had a car full of ladies, and they were going to a ladies' meeting. It was all sorted. But, uh, but Glasgow can be quite complicated, one-way streets and all sorts of things. But as it was, Kath got lost, although she was, I don't know if she was following her sat or not, but, but she got lost, so she didn't know where she was. So Kath, in her wisdom, right, she stopped the car, got out of the car, and she flagged a taxi down. And she said to the taxi man, this is where I want to go. I'm in that car and I will follow you and I'll pay when I arrive. So she followed the taxi and got where she needed to be. I want to talk about that in one of the sessions, that who we follow can be very important. Because sometimes we are lost in life, and we all get lost at times, but what we need to know is who can help us to get in the right direction, to get where we want to be, who can put us on the right road so that we can do that. You see, if ever you're lost, when you, when you go to, to uh, when you eventually, for us guys, it's, it has to be very desperate before we stop and ask. But, but when we do eventually ask and we stop, maybe because we've been nagged to stop, because we'll say, oh, no, I know where I am. I know where I am. Just around this corner. No, no, it's the next corner. <laughs> and of course, we go and eventually we, uh, we, uh, we succumb and we ask for directions. But what we're needing to know is uh, where are we and where do we need to go? How can I get from being lost to being where I am? need to be. Now, I don't know about this, but what I found is, is that those that are directionally challenged, in other words, when we get lost, and I don't know about you, but when I get lost, I don't know at what point I got lost. It's not like, oh, I turned this corner and now I'm lost. It's a case of at what point did I get lost? So it's not like I can just retrace my steps back to find where I need to be. When you're lost, you don't know where, when you got lost. It's not something that we do on purpose, is it? Yes, we don't get lost on purpose. And I want to say to you, often in our life, we can end up being lost and not knowing we're lost, but then when we do know we're lost, we need someone to be able to show us where to go and how to be unlost. Is that not right? And so we do need to realize that we don't get lost on purpose. And we don't know where exactly we did get lost. But what we do know is this, is that whatever road we are on, it determines where we go. So in other words, we don't determine where the road goes, where the path goes, where the lane goes, whatever it is that we're on. We don't determine that. That is going in a certain direction a certain way, certain de direction, and leads to a certain place. Unless, of course, you're on a, uh, one that just does a circular one, of course, you'll end up back where you were, going round in circles. And sometimes in life, of course, if you're on the wrong path, that's all you do do. You just go around in circles, don't you? You're going round and round thinking, I've been past here before. And, uh, and you think this, uh, this seems to be the same. But it always determines where we are. And that is the same for every single one of us in every area of our life. In other words, the path that we're on, if you're on the A1, 
you follow that, whether you're going south, and south or north, you are going where that road leads. The issue is that is exactly the same financially. Whatever path you are on financially is where you are heading to. Where you are on your path physically, whatever it is, you're going to end up where that leads. The problem for many of us is we don't connect the dots. We don't realize that what we are doing now will have repercussions later. We don't realize that the cause has effects. We think that we can do certain things, but we will be the exception to the rule. And how many times do we think that actually that might have happened to them, but to me, no, it won't be the same. We always want to have crop failure. We want to sow into certain things, but then when things don't turn out and we reap what we have sown, we think to ourselves, well, that's not fair. Why has that happened to us? And so we need to do that. We need to connect the dots in our life. We need to realize, in other words, that life is connected. And not only do your decisions determine what happens in your personal life, your decisions determine what happens in other people's lives. So in other words, you can, you can make a decision at one point in your life and reap the consequences, good or bad, later on in life. You don't often see it till later, yes? Some things and some decisions and some paths that we're on, other people might look at that path and think, well, that seems a, a, an unnecessary path. That seems a path that I can't understand why you're doing that path. That seems like a, a, a silly thing to do on that path. Why are you doing that? But when you come to the other end of where that path is and you end up at a different destination to the people who kept criticizing you on that path or thought you were silly on that path and they end up, because they've gone in a different direction and they end up at a different destination and they look to you on your path and they think, well, he's just lucky. And how many times do people think we're just lucky? But we're not lucky, we're on a path. We have done things daily in a decided way. We have maybe saved little by little by little and we have got to where we are because we've been on a financial saving plan. Where the others have gone, oh, there's no point in that. I'm just going to put my money into this and I need this and I need to enjoy life now and, and, and I'll save later. There's no point trying to save for your pension when you're 50 years of age. That's the wrong time to start plan your pension because you've not got a lot of time left. The time is, is when you're in your 20s, when you first start your job, you start thinking, let's start putting a little bit in. And what is happening when you're doing those little things, that other people think, why are you putting into a pension when you could be out enjoying yourself? You could be spending on a football kit. You could be doing this and the other. And they say, no, but I'm, I'm planning ahead. I'm looking ahead. And we will look at that at one of the weeks about the importance of looking ahead. We've got to look ahead. If you don't look ahead and you don't plan ahead, it is really going to be, uh, you're going to reap the, the consequences of it. So good intentions are not good enough. Now the question is, is let me ask you a question. Can you predict your future? Can you predict other people's futures? Now, you're probably your first inclination may not, I can't predict what my future is. But yet, in some way, every one of us, at some point or other, have been able to think, I should have predicted my future. Because, and I know that because all of us have said it, or we've thought it, <laughs> we've muttered it maybe under our breath. What we have said is, I should have seen this coming. How many times have we done that? I should have seen this coming. In other words, by implication, I should have realized along this path, along this journey, that some of the decisions I made were decisions that have led to where I am today. And it's usually when we get in a mess. It's usually when we're in a, in a crisis, usually when things have gone wrong. In other words, we think about our health when we're in a crisis with our health. 
We think about our finances when we're in a crisis with our finances. We think about our marriage when it's in a crisis and it's on the rocks. We think about our children and how we brought them up when it comes to a crisis. But you see, if we were wise, then we would be thinking ahead. We would be going, where do I want my children to be? What do I need to put into my children for them to be? And what paths do they need to be on? Because it's the paths that we we put them on is what will determine where they are. Not where we want them to be. Not where we think they'll be. Not where we intend them to go. Not where we desire them to go. Not where we pray for them to go. Because you can pray all you want, but the harvest principle, the principle of the path is always going to happen. Because it's a principle. Because it can't be broken. In other words, you can go and you can break a law, you can break, uh, you know, you can go, but you don't break a principle. In other words, Archimedes' principle of buoyancy, yes, which determines whether a ship will float and a stone will sink. In other words, he didn't, Archimedes didn't make it up, he just found it out, he just explained it and, and understood it. It's like Newton's law of gravity, yes, we don't, we can't break that principle. We can either leverage it or we can, to our own uh, demise, we can uh, try to go against it. In other words, if you walk and step off a building, yes, the law of gravity is going to come into place whether you believe it, know it, understand it, I've had it explained to you, it doesn't matter diddly, it applies. And that's the same with the principle in every other area of your life is the principle that when you apply it to the, to the journey of your life, to your relationships in life, when you look at your relationships and you're investing in your relationships and you're looking at the path that your marriage is on, that's the key. I remember when we were, when we were come to Stockton particularly and uh, Kath and I used to get a lot of criticism for the way we raised our girls. Now, I can talk about it now because where my girls are. But at the time, we just, we, we just stayed silent. At the time, they thought we were foolish because we wouldn't watch and we let our girls watch Harry Potter. We wouldn't let them operate with some of the, 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 the game cards that were going around. And there was all sorts of things going on. And for us, it was a case of we're not going there. We're not going to give an opportunity for that to go there. But so we do. Now, obviously, where our girls are is, 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 is very much different. People can say, oh, well, but what we've got to see is it's the journey. It was a path that they were on. Now, it doesn't guarantee success, but it enables them to be able to make good decisions. And as a parent, our role is not to be our children's friend. It's to be their mentor. It's to be their coach. It's to help them to make good decisions in life. That's why we're there. We, in other words, we ask them to say, make some questions. Get some good questions. That's what we're going to do. A few of the questions we're going to, we're going to look at in this series. But some good questions that we need to, need to ask ourselves. And in other words, uh, when, when they're doing something and they ask you, um, uh, well, you know, what should I do? And instead of just saying what they should do, you say, well, what do you think you should do? What would you do if I wasn't here? All the time you're trying to train them. You're trying to get them on a path that, that, that's going to enable them to become who they can be. Amen? They're on a path in every avenue of their life. And I want to say to you, it applies whether you like it or not, whether you appreciate it or not. So we know that, don't we? We know in our own life that we can often predict our future. We should be able to predict our future. But I'll tell you what the other thing is, is though I'll tell you what's really a lot more easier I find anyway, is I can predict other people's futures. I don't know about you, but I can see some things happening. I see things, and and I'm sure you do the same, don't you? You think, she's doing what? She's going where? He's what? And so we look at that, don't we? And then eventually, because we are waiting, like in slow motion, for the car crash. We're looking for the crisis. We know it's coming, and we can tell them it's coming, but to them, they just think, oh, Dad, what do you know? 
I mean, have you seen the clothes you wear, Dad? What, what, what do you know? Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, so that, that's the issue is we can so often predict it in other people. I, I can't understand why he stopped going out with me. And everybody else thinks we've seen it coming for months. I can't understand why I'm in debt. But other people around can see the pattern and are saying, what's a surprise? There's no surprise to that. Amen? So we have got to realize that we can often see in others what we can't see in ourselves. And we often find that they can see things in us that we can't see. Yes? So we can see what's in them. And they can't see it, and we can see, they, they can see things in us that we can't see in ourselves. For the reason is, is we don't actually want to look into it because we don't want to make the changes that are necessary. Now, you see, the issue is most problems, personal problems in life, cannot be fixed. So in other words, like where you can take the car into garage and have new brakes fitted, you can't do that with your life. You can go and get the oven and put a, put a new oven light in it. You can do things with oven. You can do it with a lawnmower. You can fix things. But people are far more complex. And so, like you can fix a computer, and you say, well, the computer's got a memory, and I have no... We have memories. And what happens in our life and in your life follows you. In other words, it goes where you go. Your past will always be with you. You cannot just say, I'm fixed. And this is one of the things that I have found so often, is people come to pastors, they come to counselors, they go to psychologists, and they're in a crisis, and they are looking for a fix. They're looking for them to make a, give a solution to their problem. But any wise counselor will know that they will ask some good questions. Because they know that by asking the right questions, they are going to lead the person to come up, hopefully, with the right answer. Because what happens is, if you are led to get the right answer from yourself, and you think, okay, I came up with that, you are more likely to do it than if I was to tell you, which, of course, is why I'm a lousy counsellor, because I would just say, this is what you need to do. Where a counsellor will very well, certainly a great counsellor, will ask great questions and lead you along a path so that you can find your, your, the answers, not for a quick solution, but so that you can be on a different path. The issue is never a quick fix, because the quick fix, if you don't change direction, you're not going to be back in that quick fix. So in other words, you're in debt, you come Sunday morning, and uh, God speaks to you, and God says, I'm going to wipe off your debt, and so you go home and you find that your debt's been wiped out. Or if you don't change, you are just going back to debt. So in other words, it's not the fix you need, it's the direction that we need. What is the direction that we're going to go in? And that is fantastic. And I think that we need to, just to kind of think about this um, for a few moments. Because when we understand about changing direction, and one of the things I find is, is that my, um, Jesus taught about this. I know you might find that surprising. But Jesus, of course, didn't call it the principle of the path. Yes? He called it something else. But he, Matthew chapter 7, um, 6 and 7 are known as the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is giving this sermon. Now, it may be that he's preached this a lot. He may have preached it at different points. We don't really know. But one of the things is, is that he's preached and he's done parable after parable and saying after saying, and it's great. And then he comes to finish, and he finally said, after all that he said, right at the end of his sermon, he comes with another parable. And, he and, and, and this parable um, is in Matthew 7, and it starts at verse 24. It says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. In other words, Jesus says... If you do what I say, then you will, you will be on my path. 
In other words, it's not just about that. Unfortunately, of course, we think, he says, that everyone who does these words of mine and puts them into practice will experience immediate relief, financial uh, um, um, prosperity, and they will be healthy mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. That's what we think he said. But he didn't do that. He didn't offer a quick fix, didn't Jesus? He quite simply says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise person. He's wise. In other words, it's wisdom. It's a process. It's going somewhere. It's not a one-off decision. It's not just something that's gone. To follow Jesus means to keep his sayings. So he didn't offer that, but he offered a different direction. He offered a different destination. So you'll be wise. Now, not necessarily, he didn't say you'll be smart, although you might be smart. He didn't say that you'll be wealthy, but you might be wealthy. He didn't say you'll be talented, But you might be talented, but what he is talking about is you will be wise. You see, a wise person understands that life is connected, that what I do today has repercussions later on in life. In other words, outcomes uh, determine where we will end up. Yes? In other words, the past is connected to the future. And so he says this, everyone who is These words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise person who built. Building is a process. You don't put a building up overnight. Yes, there is a process. You do the, and you you, you can't go around Stockton without seeing a lot of buildings in. They they do the groundworks. They've obviously, even before that, they've got the plans into things. They know the design of the house. They know what they're looking for. They know what the, the estate is going to look. They know what the position of each house is. Before they ever build, they're putting in waterworks and electricity and gas and putting all these things. Then they put the foundations in and still nothing seems to be seen. Then they build a shell and then they put a roof on and then they line it inside. Then they put in the first lot of electrics in and plumbing and then they come along and put the plasterboard and plaster and then the second fix. In other words, there's a process. And sometimes we need to know that God is working on us and in us and the things that we are doing could be and are are the best things are the foundations because when you're in the foundation and you're digging in the foundation I want to say to you you can't be seen because you're below ground but you're digging and you're digging and you're preparing and God wants to prepare in you and in me some foundations for when the building goes up Because if the building goes up and the preparation, the foundation, the wisdom is not put in, we're not going according to God's uh, teaching, we will find, as in this parable, that the house will fall. And this is important for us. So he's not like a, puts him in the price like a wise person who built on the rock, absolutely. That represents Jesus' teaching. It may represent the hard way, the narrow way, the difficult way. It means discipline. It means the things that are unseen, the things that nobody's maybe going to recognize straight away. It could be years, if at all, because you're building your character. You're building your convictions, and God is working in that. But in verse 26, we see a second character that Jesus introduces, And he says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish person who built his house on the sand. In other words, he's a fool. Why? Because he hasn't thought ahead. Because he's built and it looks good and everybody thinks what a wonderful house, but he's built on a faulty foundation. And so when the winds and the storms and the difficulties and the temptations and the trials of life come in, because this house represents our life, when that comes in, then the house comes tumbling down. So if you want to stand strong in the storm, you've got to build the foundations. You've got to build on the teachings of Jesus. You've got to get that into your life. Amen? So sand is... It's something that's quick, it's easy. It's, uh, it, you know, everybody's doing it. The wise person isn't just lucky, even if he does look like he's lucky. 
And so today I want us to go away from here thinking about how can we change the direction of our life. Now obviously, the biggest thing you can ever do is to follow someone who will show you the way. You can, and if you will put this into practice, it will change your life forever if you say, I am going to follow the teachings of Jesus. Whatever Jesus says, I'm going to go, whether I like it or I don't like it, whether I feel it fits or it doesn't fit, whether I understand it, I don't understand it. Why? Because I'm going to trust that he knows best. And I want you to memorize a scripture for this week, ready for next week. Amen? And I think that that's, this is important for us. And it's found in Proverbs 27 and verse 12, wherever it is. Um, and um, <clears throat> it says, The wise man sees danger and takes refuge. The wally, the fool, the simple guy, whatever, the Wally, J-H-V, okay, the Jonathan Harris version. The Wally keeps going and suffers for it. Now, next week, you will get extra points if you use the G-H-V, okay? <laughs> it's so in the forest. The wise person, yes, sees what? Sees something coming, sees a potential for a problem, sees that there's a cliff there, and none just kind of go to the cliff and think, okay, I'm going to walk off that cliff or I'm just going to live near the edge of the cliff. I like the view from the cliff. I think it's quite nice there on the cliff. But because if you live right on the edge there with the cliff, guess what's going to happen one of the days? Now, wisdom says, let's build a barrier at the top of the cliff. Wisdom says, let's get something there to stop me falling off the cliff. Had something to help me not, not fall into that off that cliff financially or relationally or academically or whatever it might be, put the body. I want to say, that's wisdom. It's putting the hard work in to say there's a boundary and looking after that boundary, keeping the boundary healthy in order that you don't fall off the cliff. Now, you can still learn. You could fall off the cliff and at the bottom of the cliff, when the hospital and the, the ambulance is taking you away and you've got broken bones and in, for in life and use of things, you've got a broken heart and you're broken relationships, whatever it might be. At the bottom of that, you will still learn. But you will learn the hard way. And I want to tell you, life's too short to learn everything the hard way. So don't keep learning when you're at the bottom of the cliff, when you've made a mistake and things have fallen through. Why not start and put some guardrails, put some barriers, put some boundaries in place in your life? That's what's called looking ahead. That's what's called there is a danger here and I need to look after that. Amen? I believe that God wants us to really take this on board. He preached about it. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and it will change our life if only you will do it. It might just be some small steps. And you want to look at the areas in your life, but your homework this week and in your connect groups is to think through, where am I headed? Where am I going? What's the path that I am on? Who should I follow? Who should I ask for directions? Who will help me? Because that is so important. Amen.